this is one of the things that is allowing this this particular um, uh, movement to, to, to gain empathy. Thank you, Jeffrey. He said, Taluk, this is one of the things that is allowing African Americans to gain empathy, and we can add some other progressive words to that. But in that statement, Talu, mm -hmm. in view of what we've seen, we've seen officers, uh, the one, DuBose was fired and indicted immediately. And we've seen some progress made in this particular area. And view of this statement, Talu, going forward is not quite enough. And those words we just spelled out. Give us your take on it. Did you need me to read it again? Much has been said since I read it. Yeah, try so, read so it again. Clarity. We see clarity right here. So let's do that. Fear, indifference, paranoia, passivity, rage, alienation, and violence are a few of the byproducts of living in a society in which African Americans are victims of or silent partners in abusive, brutal, and racist behavior by the police. And there a lot to be said about that, but take off on it, Tyler, if you don't mind. Yeah. Well, we, we have to, as, as, uh, as uh, Americans, you know, under the present structure of our government, we have to, uh, uh, we have to suggest or encourage our women people to raise warriors instead of passive conforming males. We've we've lived for in this in this modern time, since the civil rights movement, our women folk have been destroying our boys, making them into things that we historically are not used to in the black community, you know? We, we have to encourage them and tell them, raise warriors. Why? Because you're talking about what's happening right now and in hope that it's going to change in the future. Give up the hope. Yes. There's no hope Hope won't get the job done. No, no. And Tyler, we're talking about 2015, right? Yeah. Continue. Go yeah. ahead. So we, we have to prepare. See, that's preparation. When you when a mother instilled into her son strength and power, yeah. that's preparation for the future. Our women have not done that. That's why we have all the social problems that we're having. First of all, they got rid of the men around the boys. They, meaning the women and the Caucasian and the, and the European people. Mm -hmm. They got rid of all the men <laughs> around the boys. Mm -hmm. This grew out of slavery. And yes. like moved into that whole welfare welfare system. Yes, right, yes. They removed the they removed the strength. Yes, removed the legs from up under the boards because they all know. Now our black women don't know this, but our enemies know that if any change is going to happen in the world, any way in the world, the males going to make the change. Everybody know that in the world. We call them soldiers. Warriors, fighters, mm -hmm. they gonna make the, the males make the changes. But if you got a whole society of people with males that doesn't have any, that don't have any legs, then you won't have any fighters. You won't have anybody to protect you. The, uh, 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 pardon me. The women would not have the men to protect them. See, they are in, by them implementing the plan of the colonizers. <coughs> They're removing the protection from themselves. And that's why you can see the police beat a woman nearly to death and then kill females around this country and the men just don't respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. They say, the men say, I call the police. <laughs> they crazy. <laughs> it's insane. This is the mark of insanity. Yes, it's insane. Call, call, the, yeah, call the police. Call, call the one who is going to come and kill mm -hmm. Your woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. As See, opposed to fighting like hell. Right. Because if, if you had warriors, yes. if the women had raised warriors, there would be a war started right there when that woman was getting beat. Mm -hmm. Men wouldn't think about their lives. Mm -hmm. See, what they have caused our, our boys to do is think about their own damn safety. Mm -hmm. 
They don't want to take no pain. They don't want to bleed. They don't want to die. Mm -hmm. That's not a people that's going to bring change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to bring some more of the same old bull. Yeah. Thank you, Talu. Listen, Lonnie, you, you, you're ready and ready to go. I, I agree with the brother. I've seen a uh, post, you know, on the Central Land case. And as sad as it is, one of our brothers had the audacity to say, said that she deserved or she caused her own death by talking back to the, to the man. <laughs> and you know that Well that goes back to our previous statement that we come out and say he must have deserved it. In this case, a <coughs> woman must have deserved must it, have must have done something must, wrong because the white police officer loud. killed her. Right. She Go ahead, she spoke out loud. Yes. And, and just what the mother said you know, the, the white man and along with our sisters are, for instance, our, our, our black mothers, they are so much fearful of their son getting hurt, like he said. They're not going to put them out in, to train or to, you know, to get in harm's way. They're so protective with the male son that there's no way that he's going to learn that, that how to be protected. The, the, the dominant protector, if the male is not there to teach him how to be um, that dominant, that role. If, if for example, if, uh, if and we're, I'm not bounding any single mother out there, but if her son doesn't have a male influence in his life, then I believe that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of effeminate men out here because their tutor or trainer on how to be a man comes from a woman. And we both know a woman, yeah, we have women warriors out there, but the man is the warrior. He's the soldier. So if his training comes from an effeminate way, then how, how is he going to be in the a, in a front, you know? And, yeah, we have a lot of brothers that's growing up from single women, not to say that they are not strong and not to say that they don't have the capability to be strong, but the odds is, as current day situation shows, we, we have less, we are uh, the least population, they call us minorities, which, you know, that's another subject. Yeah. But if we are the minority and 90, uh, certain 80% of our male population is either have been incarcerated or incarcerated right now, then who's who's teaching the male generation now? And that goes back to what I was saying about when the brother said the psychopathic mentality of the, 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 the uh, white supremacists, it's it's that fear because they know, for instance, if I'm if I'm in fear of this brother because I know he has this dominance Everything about him, his mm -hmm. complexion, mm -hmm. his his uh, physical structure, um, his his mental, mm -hmm. and then I know that I'm not all the way there. We can we yeah, I'm weaker to, to right. be blunt. I'm right. weaker than this man right, right here. Right. Then my whole psyche on life is how to conquer that man right. from him, and he, his mentality might not even be on conquering right. me. But if I'm in fear that I will be conquered by this man, then I have to already have strategies in play just in case that happens. And that's what we're having now. We have a weaker race that is in fear that one day, yeah, we're going to say, you know what, we're tired of this man. We're going to show you how it's done. And that's, that's that fear, man. You mentioned some things that are problematic in terms of family and structure and social problems, which points back to what Talut said. And Talut continues, I'm going to come right to you, Jeff. You're excited and ready to go, ready to go and I'd like to see that. <laughs> but Talut continues to be provocative. He continues to say things that many are not willing to say in terms of bringing into the discussion the, the, the aspect that is detrimental to African Americans in terms of family. Now the event coming up Saturday, Dr. James Small is supposed to be talking about 
rebuilding the black family. Go ahead, Jeffrey. And then want to shift to Omar real quick. Okay, I just want to go back and change my word from what I said earlier. Uh, not not empathy, uh, but uh, those devices, these cameras that, that we have at our fingertips that we're able to, uh, to post, this is what allows us to gain sympathy for our movement. And you see, sympathy is, is, where, is where it starts. You have to have people that care about what's going on first. Once you have a mass amount of people that care about what's going on, then they can face their fears. They have to, they're, they're made to have to, to face their indifference because it, it's like, what are you going to do when you see injustice? Are you going to do something about it or are you just going to let it keep going? So that, that's what, I, what I, I, I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. But, but, but You want to make one more point? Uh, yeah, just to respond to what you're what Real you, quick. Uh, well, what we're, we're down to, uh, it's 2.43. So that's, that's what, 17, 18 minutes left. Right. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Um, and, and I'm, I, I definitely agree with, with brother um, Taluf and, and Lonnie a hundred percent. We're living in a generation now where yes, we go into these homes and for, for whatever many of reasons, um, they're they're headed by women, and even the women are are so strong-minded in themselves and having to be or believing that they have to be this new 2015 uh, independent woman and do it all by themselves, that they, within their, their and, and you know, once again, I like to say, we're not blaming the sisters, it's not your fault. You know, it's not your fault, it, it, it's really not our fault. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is a situation that we're in. The women <laughs> are trying to do their best, and for some reason the men are not present, so they take take on the task of trying to raise a man, and in their mind, they're they're, cha they're they're raising them to be a man the best way that they know how. But the truth is, they don't know how because they are not that. That's right. And so we have a lot of really, um, we have. It, it, go, go ahead, Ron. Can I add to that? Just just on my. Let me go to okay. Omar real quick. Omar, you're talking about. Empathy, sympathy, these are some problematic words. And I think going forward, there's a war being waged against people of color. And that we have to understand these words. Part of this war is, is going to be uh, around, <coughs> you all tell me what you think, around words and phrases and specificity and the way in which we use those words. In a movement, do you gain? Sympathy, or do you gain support, or do you gain allies? Now, empathy is something different because empathy has to do with understanding and sharing, identifying, and relating to whatever the situation is at hand. And address any part of that. The family structure, single mothers, mothers raising, black boys. Now, Talu used legs. I'm feeling him. But are they raising them not to have legs to stand on or not to just, in fact, not have, have balls? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, Omar. You know, we have to understand that we have been at war for this family since they got here about 6,000 years ago. And when you talk about, you know, uh, if you go to the religion that we claim, uh, Christianity, that teach you to love your enemy, turn the other cheek, uh, love people that despitefully use you. America don't practice that religion. They give it to you to keep you in check and make you feel bad when you go outside of it. But they don't practice, they don't love nobody and they don't forgive nobody. They kill everybody. They came here, look, they killed Indians. They killed them by the tens of millions of them. They not only killed the men and the women, they killed the babies. They wanted to make sure they were all dead down to the last one. That's why some tribes, they all know more Indians of that particular tribe. Mm -hmm. They all gone. And they wanted to make sure the last one was dead. If you go into Central America, it's the same thing. They use babies for target practice. They would cut the mother's stomach over and let the baby drop out and then crush the baby when it hit the ground. Mm -hmm. They would put stakes up there, up there behind and they'd come out their mouth. Mm -hmm. They had fun with that. That's who you're dealing with. The same white people. They don't change. They, nothing's changed. Come out of their religion. Come out of that mess. Mm -hmm. Your enemy is going to be your enemy till he leave here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get God to help you, you'll be killed by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lonnie, 
Omar said something about the religion that African Americans claim. The key word that, that I heard is claim, and you had another point you wanted to make. But I, I want to hear you say something about African Americans claiming this religion, and we're talking about Christianity. Okay, yes, uh, and I could try to tie it in with, with the point I was trying to make. Just reiterate what the brother was saying about, you know, us, uh, the women raising our men, and we were talking shows ago about the right passage, you know, in our ancient culture. Mm -hmm. And our men, our boys, our young boys were taken away from the community and with the elder men. And they were taught. They had to pass that phase in order to get to the next phase, right? So that's what we mean by our men are missing. You know, our, our boys are mostly being with the women now and not with other Mainly men, men mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's what I was. Yes, mostly about. raised by yeah, yeah. by women, by females. Yeah. So when when they bring that into our religion, the head of the household is the woman. So if we're in war and I conquer your woman and I have her to have my religion, <laughs> then her seed is going to have my religion. Mm -hmm. So I took that right there, you know. Yeah. So and if if she's not that one to hold. Uh, uh, understand her roots, um, then the child will never get to the roots either. So, you know, we have that war right there. And another point, you know, I want to say when it comes to the psyche and the, our, our people, the darker races, you know, our spirituality, our love, you know, we have that towards other humans, whether you this color, that color, or whatever. That's shown all the, mainly all the colors show that. But, you know, the history of the, the white race, like I said, when it comes to dominance, uh, that, that psyche, it, they're trying to show their superiority over everyone. And and that's sometimes how they justify their crimes even yeah. within religion. Because by law, if I say that you are not fully human and you're less than my dog or my animal, then if I'm teaching my kids that the entity that we're talking about, they won't have it because they don't see you as a full human. You're more like a, a, a animal that we can dispose of anytime we, you know, whatever. So that psyche, that, that is what's playing around with this. <clears throat> We're down to 10 minutes. And do not forget, on Thursday, at the Cannon Center, a big event, yes, Omar. Doors open at 5, you just started, and Ms. Farrakhan will be here. Speaking on justice or else. Is that right, Omar? Yes. And then on Saturday, Manefer produ uh, Production is going to be doing, presenting Professor James Smalls talking about rebuilding the back black family as a counter, a counter to the war against black people. And Omar, you're doing the libations, right? Yes, sir. Yes, right. Sir. And I will be there myself in living living color. But Omar, look, we have about eight or nine minutes and everybody's hand is up. Let's move with the quickness now. Omar and then you talk. Yeah, yeah, you know, when we look at look at you know, we're talking about the, the, the uh, black man out of the home, you know, that was planned. Uh, and it and it, it's worked very well. Black women started uh, latching on to white women in women's liberation. Black mm -hmm. women have never been oppressed like white women. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had no need to get with them. And when welfare came in, that was the that was the worst thing we could have joined into, the welfare system where you couldn't have a man in the house. Mm -hmm. They would come into your house and check to make sure there was no evidence of a man living there. And if you had evidence of a man living there, you couldn't get welfare benefits, the, the free cheese and the other free commodities they got, mm -hmm. and the free housing. So you had to get rid of the man to get the benefits. Mm -hmm. And then you go into slavery where the, the, you couldn't protect your own family. You were the, you were the man. And you had a wife and you had children, but the man, if the white man wanted to sleep with your wife, you couldn't do anything about it. He mm -hmm. wanted to beat your children for whatever misdeed he thought they did. You couldn't protect your children. Mm -hmm. In fact, he would beat you in front of your children mm -hmm. to make make everybody understand that you he not the man, the white man is the man. Mm -hmm. And that's how we refer to ourselves today. When we talk about the man's coming, we ain't talking about no black man coming. Right. 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 We call right, right. You, you hear many African Americans only as much today as we did as they say back in the day, as they say, but they say the man. Even in some of the songs, some of those those uh what was the what was the guy Talu? Uh 
Fred is dead. Yeah, Fred Superfly. Is Superfly. Superfly. Yeah, the man. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, right, right. Absolutely. Well, you said a uh, great, great man, a great man. And that's still a great man. Today. Yeah. And it's still going on today. Now listen, Talu. Yeah. We only we only had number five. Okay. But look, we, we, we moving right along. <laughs> Talu, yeah. is it clear that police brutality toward African Americans? and other people of color is like slavery, which we've been talking about, and I just mentioned it, part of the birth of this nation. Real, systematic, and devastating to all people of this nation. Keep it in mind that people of white privilege say there's no systemic police problem. Is this problematic? It, it is, it is. But first I want to say this about the man, the, the, the yes. black man and we, we, Boy. That's seven minutes. I Let's move it quickly. Um, a man teaches a boy how to fight, primarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, women got it all wrong. <laughs> they they think the man teaches the boy how to play baseball. Okay, mm -hmm. how to play horseshoes. <laughs> you know, and do what you do what I say do type stuff. But a man teach a boy how to fight. Okay, and that's what we missing. And that's why when the police do what they do, nobody fights. Because the woman taught him to play baseball, you know, or, or, or led him to think baseball is being a man, is, a man is doing it with his boy, and, I, and maybe now white black uh, 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 horseshoes or something, games, mm -hmm. games, you mm -hmm. know, relating with the boy, you mm -hmm. know. But no, we, you're taught how to fight by men. Now, when it comes to the white man and slavery, the white man makes a better slavery, better slave than a black man ever would. See, in Africa, there were nations who had had tens of thousands of white slaves in the nation, okay? So they made a much better slave, but we got tricked into slavery, okay? And, and the white man, a male being, as we call him, the slave master. The chain, the industri the industry that produced chain and, and neck irons and leg irons were the power behind slavery of the black man. But the white man didn't require any of that. He automatically submit to the slavery and went ahead on and did what he was supposed to do. But they had to take chain. You understand? They had to take steel mm -hmm. to make a black man and woman into a slave. Okay? So we got to get this right. Okay. Okay? Because we don't have it right. We actually believe that the white man is the dominant male and that's why we are slaves. Or, or we're enslaved, or that's why we're in the condition that we're in. No, it is not. Our attitude, our brain got us trapped. We're Get out of that thinking, and you'll become that dominant male in the morning. We're down to five minutes. I'm done. And you said quite a bit <laughs> about thinking. Omar has mentioned being debriefed. He's mentioned the mental process. Jeffrey, you want to say something in addition? to the question I'm about to ask you. I can see it, I can see it in your, in your eyes. But the media, police, this whole psychic problem, most of our condition is mental. Somehow or another we've bought into this process that we have to be the way, way we are and we're relying on this whole thing about hope and praying to Jesus and going to church Sunday and all that kind of stuff. Give us your take on the question and the other point that you wanted to make. Uh, just, just, uh, just to come off on, on that. Uh, you know, we're, we're a deceived people. Yes. Uh, we've been deceived. Yes. We've been. Deceived. We've accepted. It. We've accepted it. I, I, it was something I, I wanted to go back to. Uh, Brother uh, Lonnie was saying earlier about the fear, and I don't know if he realized he was doing this, but this is what I caught. Uh, he was saying that. The fear in their, and when we say there, in this case, we're talking about Europeans. The fear in the, in the psyche of the Europeans is, is playing along in their psyche, and this is the result. What we're living in in America is the result of the fear in their psyche, because we are, in fact, the dominant superior race by nature and biology. So their relationship and with us is based upon their fear of us. We're, we can wipe them out by not killing them, by loving one another. But mm -hmm. they, in order to preserve themselves, 
have to kill us. Do you understand that? That is one of the foundation. You have to understand that to understand the way white supremacy works. And I don't know if, 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 if Lonnie understood what he was saying, but if, if you were listening, he was saying fear, in fear, and also the word inferior. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what I kept hearing over and over. In fear, the Europeans are in fear of the black man. Well, why are they in fear? Do they have an inferiority complex? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do have an inferiority complex. Yes. But they got it spent on us. We accepted the lie that we are the inferior ones. So that's why we have to de be debriefed. It's a twofold problem. It's not only based upon their uh, 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 psychopathic um, um, mind, it's also based upon ours because we've accepted their lies. So that's what we've got to work through as, as people of African descent. Okay, we're down to two minutes. Because we are not inferior. We're down, we we're are. down, we're down to two minutes. Omar says, this previous one, says something about being silent partners. And in, in terms of our own participation or, or acceptance of our conditions and allowing ourselves to be victims. Does that play into this whole process where you, are you personally are talking about debriefing, being debriefed, and the way forward on that? Silent partners, that, is that the key word in that, in that previous question? You know, abusive behavior by police brutality. The, the biggest problem we have, according to what I hear from the honorable We've got one minute, Archon, 30 seconds. Is our fear Omar. of the white man. Mm -hmm. If we can get past our fear of the white man, we can liberate ourselves overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are afraid of the man, we're going to continue to suffer under this bondage that we have right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Going to change. Yeah, and going forward as we go through this piece, we're going to take a closer critical look at words. And that ties into something that Talud has said time and time again on the show, that the imaginary many of us have, an imaginary white man in the back of our minds who does not exist. Yes. So that ties into that whole fear problem is a, a huge problem in the minds of African Americans. That is something that we're going to take, take a it's close it's look, white look at. To the white Santa Claus to the white man. All of that needs to be broken. Really. Right. Absolutely. We have, we have 30 seconds left. Closing comments, Omar. 30 seconds. Take 30 minutes. We've 30 minutes? I mean 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean 30 seconds. Please come and hear Minister Louis Farrakhan on this coming Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes. At the Cannon Center. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get there early. There's only space for about 2,100 people. Last time we turned away 6,000. We didn't have okay. enough space for them. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. And please come okay. to hear Dr. Small on Saturday at the Dr. Right. Robert King Labor Center. Please where, do Where you will be giving the libation. I'll be giving the libation. All yes. praise yes. be to the God yes. of heavens and earth. I hear you. And Zura and I will be there. We'll be there live and come. And she's going to be looking good, too. <laughs> Look, thank you for coming. And hope you come back next Sunday as we continue. Can I get you where you'll be back next Sunday? Oh, yeah. Can you give me yeah. a word? Oh, yeah. So we're going to have the Nation of Islam back, Anthony Muhammad. Uh, don't really know yet. And Judith Jones, we're going to talk some more about African American music and those messages about relationships that are in those love songs. And that's a wrap.